ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم اما بعد قال عز وجل بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال ايضا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قام ليلة القدر ايمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه respected brothers and sisters on the day of yawm al qiyamah after hisab has been given accountability has been given and people are going towards the direction where is jannah or jahannam there be a group of believers who have lived this life in this world but they were not obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they commit sins but they did not make tawbah to Allah before their soul were taken from their body so as they are going towards jahannam they meet the keeper of jahannam the malaika malik So then they ask him he says oh angel we have a request so he says what is your request they said we would like to cry out of the regrets that we have not been obedient to Allah in the world so then Malik says go ahead and they will cry such a cry out of remorse from their heart <clears throat> they were cry because they know it was sign for salah they didn't pray they will cry because ramadan came and gone and they never passed they will cry because of the sins they committed and they did not make tawbah to allah such a crying when they finish Malik said to them Ma ahsan al-buka law kana fi dunya What beautiful tears that you have shed If only was those sh- tears shed in dunya Meaning the tears that you shed now has no value those tears should have been shed before you leave the world then those tears would have had value in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those tears would have protected you from jahannam those are the tears of tauba he realized that they really regret what they have done in this life but it's too late this too late even the angels could not have saved them even the angel recognized what tears they were crying such a sincere such a heartfelt tears ma ahsan al buka even the angel was touched by the way they were crying there has no value my dear brothers and sisters This is the last khutbah for the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is going, it's gone, it's finished. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to forgive our sins before Ramadan leaves. Woe unto that man who Allah has blessed to live to see Ramadan but did not get their sins forgiven. Ramadan is such a month that before it came our sins were like the mountains and it's leaving and the hope that we have in our hearts that Allah erases our sins inshallah my dear brothers and sisters let us not be like those group of believers who before entering into Jahannam, they had great regrets. It's very important, my dear brothers and sisters, that Allah has given us everything in life. The most precious of the gift and the bounty that Allah has given us, that He did not give billions of people, is Iman. <coughs> What we have is more valuable than anything we possess in this life. Be it our position, be it our fame in this life, be it the mansion we live in, the cars we drive, the bank account we have. It does not matter what you have. In the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are precious not because of what you have materially and superficially. You have value in the eyes of Allah because of Iman. Because Allah has given us Iman. Had it not that Allah did not give us Iman, what would have become of our conditions? Had we died in that state without Iman, where were we going? Imagine myself and yourself if we did not Iman. Just take a moment and imagine. We were doomed to Jahannam. Allah has given us Iman. Then Allah has given us life. Then Allah has given us bounties. Allah has given us health. Hisab will be given about our health. I have blessed you with health for 60, 70, 80 years of your life. Oh my believers. What have you done with your health that I have given you? And we take pride in my health. I have no complaints. I'm 60, I'm 70, I'm going strong. We are proud to tell people, no diabetes, no blood pressure, nothing, alhamdulillah. But above all of that, we are the most disobedient to Allah. Azan is calling five what? we are not in the masjid. Ramadan is coming and going, we are not fasting. We have enough wealth to give zakat, no zakat has been paid. We have the means to go for hajj, we have never performed hajj. And then our health is being a curse to us, rather than a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of our health, it will destroy us. That health that Allah has given us, it is like our wealth. It is like our family. It is like our career. If we do not use it in the obedience of Allah, then that thing becomes a curse upon you. Because of that thing, it will lead you towards Jahannam. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters. We do not want to leave this world and be like those people who are begging and crying. Begging and crying out of regrets. Many of us will have regrets, my dear brothers and sisters. Wallah. When we are young, you have the strength. 
We are traveling, we are eating, we are working, we are accumulating, mashallah, things are going good. Do you, when, do you know when that moment will come? When we will start to reflect our life in front of us? When we have severe illness, when we are lying on that bed, and you have no return, doctor has given you up. Doctor has given you up. That moment of lying on that bed, where you cannot do anything for yourself, you're just waiting to die. After 70 years, 80 years of your life, you're waiting to die. Then your whole life is flashing in front of you. All the wealth that you've accumulated in this world is there in front of you. Your family, your children, who you have never yet teach them Islam, they are surrounding you. What have you done with your life? What have I done with my life? This is the question, my dear brothers and sisters. We are living such a superficial life. We have come in this world and we are living this world not realizing our purpose in this world. Why am I here? Why did Allah send me here? What is my purpose here? Don't realize your purpose on your dying bed. It will not serve you any good. We are doing our bachelor's, our master's, our PhD. We are accumulating and we have, we have a solid bank account and we say, Alhamdulillah, I am successful. I am a successful person. In my life, in my family life, there is no solid. There is no siyam. My children are sleeping and waking without any namaz, any salat. Then what is success? Why would you say I'm successful? My dear brothers and sisters, success does not lie in the things we have accumulated in this world. Success is not the bank account we have. Success is not the career and the degrees we have. And the mansion we live in and the cars we drive. And the status we have in society. That is not success. Until we recognize who is Allah. Then our success is only superficial. It's not genuine. We get trapped in this world, thinking about only this world. And Shaitan deceives us, thinking and teaching our children. And we drive them like a machine to accumulate and accumulate and go higher and higher. And saying we are proud of our children, of what they have achieved. They cannot read Qulhu Allah Wahad. They cannot even raise their hand and make a dua for us. What success are we talking about? They are doctors, they are engineers. They are big people in society. Can they raise their hand and make a dua for you when you leave this world? Where have we put our children? We have destroyed the future generation. The future Ummah is destroyed because of us parents. We have given them false hopes. We are telling them from the very young age, work very hard. Kill yourself. Give up your sleep. Give up your family to accumulate to get a good house, to get a good job. We are driving them like animals. Parents are doing that to their children. Are we doing that for them to gain ilm? 
for them to learn Quran. How many of us have our children can recite Quran? How many of us have children who knows more than three or four surahs in Quran? How many of us have children who can properly pray this salat? How many of us can properly pray our salat? How many of us live in the same homes where our children cannot, they are not fasting? That should be a sign of regret already in our life. That I am, an, I am not successful. I am unsuccessful father. I am unsuccessful mother. And from now we should have regrets. Not wait in front of Malik before we enter Jahannam. We need to realize this, my dear brothers and sisters. As parents, we have a lot to be accountable for in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our children will point their fingers at us on the day of the Ayyama. We need to realize and take stock and rectify our lives before it's too late. Do not wait until you lie on that bed. Last year, a brother, very healthy, and I think I mentioned this, went on a very beautiful vacation, returned back home, got sick, went to the hospital, thinking he was just going casually to see what's happening to his stomach. He has stomach ache continuously. Doctor told him, at the age of 63 years old, you cannot return home. We have to start treatment right away. You, have, you are in stage four cancer. You only have four more months to live. The family called me, I went. They were all crying. Why? Why were they crying? They're crying of regrets. He has sons. Never one the teacher of Islam. When he think the doctor say you have four months, in six weeks we pray his janazah. In six weeks we pray his janazah. My dear brothers and sisters, do not be deceived by this world. Do not be deceived by your health, by your wealth, that you have a long life. Shaitan will always deceive us. We are going for Janaza, we are going to pray that brother Janaza. We are not thinking about my Janaza. It's not my Janaza. It's not my funeral. I'm okay. I have a long time to go. It's him I'm going to. It's her I'm going to. It's not mine. Deception upon deception. Then we never change our life. We never realize why Allah sent us in this world. And we die without realizing who is Allah. And what is our purpose in this life. Let us take stock before Eid. Before Ramadan leaves us, Ramadan has come very quickly and gone very quickly, my dear brother and sister. We must have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those of us who have made effort, we have tired ourselves, those of us who have made sacrifice, wake up in the morning to meet Qiyam, eat in suho, going late at night after taraweeh. Hmm. You get tired, we come back in the morning, go for fajr, go to your job. It's a lot of sacrifice. Hmm. Then what we hope for? We hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We hope that Allah will look at me and Allah will forgive me my sins. And Allah will give me itkumin Allah. That Allah will give me freedom from Jahannam. This is my hope. This is the hope we have in our hearts. My dear brothers and sisters, 
Do not let no one take away that hope from your heart. That Allah will forgive me. Allah will have mercy upon me. And Allah will give me Jannah insha'Allah. Don't let no one tell you anything besides that. Shaitan send agents to take away your hope. And sometimes we give up. I am old now. I've been disobedient to Allah. I hardly prayed in his salat. I only come for Jumu'ah. I only fast for one or two days. Maybe I'm not fasting. Wallahi, wallahi. Do not give up. Even if it's one salat. Even if it's one fasting. Even if it's one Jumu'ah. Do not give up in the mercy and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا تقنط من رحمة الله Oh my servant يا إبادي Oh my servant Do not give up hope in me I forgive your sins I will forgive your sins if you turn to me Wallahi all Allah wants from us is to turn to him That's all you need Allah wants us to just turn to him for one moment and say, Oh Allah, I have made so many mistakes in my life. Forgive me. Wallahi brothers, Allah does not need 20 years, 50 years of worship. Allah wants that sincerity to come from the heart. In these last nights that we have, tonight is 27 night, the odd night, and we have 29 night. Let us raise our hands, even though it is the last few nights. I have not prayed any of the nights that's passed, but I have two or three nights remaining. Raise your hands, so long, and say, Oh Allah, for whatever sins I have committed, small or big, intentional or unintentional, who oh Allah, I turn to you. Forgive me. Have mercy for me. Have mercy on my family, on my children on my spouse, on my fathers and mothers. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, my dear brothers and sisters, let us not forget our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Allah ashleh awal al-Muslimin al Gaza. May Allah protect our brothers. May Allah relieve them from their suffering. Wallahi, and I said it before, those brothers and sisters, May Allah give them dinner to the those behaving himself. All of us, my dear brothers and sisters. And they are fasting with those suhu. With no food, they are fasting. When someone asks you, how can you keep a fast with those suhu? What will they say? Hasbunallah wa ni'ma wa No food. But they are willing to fast for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What an iman. What an iman that they have. They have given the entire woman a lesson of what is Iman. We need to take that lesson, my dear brothers and sisters. We have food in abundance. We have drinks in abundance. We have living conditions so beautiful, but yet still we do not fast. Yet still we do not obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What condition? No homes. No place to take a shower. Nothing. But they have intention to fast. No iftar in the evening. They don't know where they're going to get a sip of water or a date or something to eat to make the iftar. You ask them, what are you going to eat for iftar? Nothing. Hasbun Allah wa ni'ma wa Oh Who Allah I put my trust in you. And you are enough. You are enough for me, O oh Allah. Let us not forget them, my dear brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take us and have mercy upon us. May Allah protect this Ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our future generations, inshallah. May Allah forgive us, have mercy upon us, and accept all our siyam, our qiyam, our duas, and everything, inshallah, our sadaqat, our khairat in this blessed month. Aquli kawli hadha. Wa astaghfiru ahli wa lakum fastaghfiru. Inna huwa al-furu. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما 
Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim inna tahamidu mujid wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama barik ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim inna tahamidu mujid inna Allah ya'amru bil'ali wal ihsan wa ita'i dhul qurba wa yana anil fahsai wal munka wal bahar ya'idhukum la'idhukum tazakkaroon uskulullahi wa uskulukum inna Allah ya'amru bil'ali wal ihsan wa ita'i dhul qurba wa yana anil fahsai wal munka wal bahar ya'idhukum la'idhukum tazakkaroon wa yana anil fahsai wal munka wal bahar يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فكروا الله يذكر ولا ذكر الله يأكل أقم الصلاة